Hi everybody, Kurt Zepp here. So I recently created an image of the Tarantula Nebula and it looks like this. Okay, for those of you that don't know, the Tarantula Nebula is in the large Melagelonic Cloud, which is a southern hemisphere object. So how on earth did I collect it? Well, without going to the southern hemisphere, which I did not do, that's a dream of mine to go there and collect data, but most of us, what we would do uh, in lieu of that is you would buy time on a remote astronomical observatory, which is geared towards astrophotographers, amateur and professionals. A couple of them, of them offhand I can think of, uh, Deep Sky West, that's for the Northern Hemisphere, that's a site out in New Mexico. And the, for the Southern Hemisphere, there's a company called Chiliscope. Now, those are really neat. They're, they get rather expensive, though, or could be, could be rather expensive, but some people like to do that and, and go for it. I don't know if I would do that. I, I like to collect my own data, but who knows? You know, I, I might sign up for one of those things eventually. So how did I create this image? Because I didn't use those things. What I did is I used data from slu.com. Now, slu.com is a program geared towards education rather than astrophotography. And the company, slu.com, actually reached out to me, to our school system, and is giving us a free trial to use for my classes to see how we like it. And if we like it, uh, we would pay a yearly subscription. Now, how does it work? Well, what you do is you go on these quests and investigate phenomena. These phenomena might be stars, galaxies, nebula, the sun. It might be why does the earth spin, tides, anything. It's, it's unlimited what, it, what they ask you, these, these quests. They already have them worked out. And as part of these quests, you learn about this astronomical phenomena. But as part of it, they have these little missions you go on. And these missions is where you collect your own data using some professional-grade telescopes. Now, they have telescopes located in two locales currently, in Chile for the Southern Hemisphere, and they have another site in the Canary Islands for the Northern Hemisphere. So they got the whole night sky covered. And these missions, you only collect like a certain amount of time on it, and you, can, you get a picture that you collect. And, you, and it's kind of neat because you can actually watch it live if, if you happen to be awake. And you can watch it collecting the data. So it's really good, really neat. And it really makes the student feel take ownership because they're collecting that data. So it's, it's more than just find a picture. It's, it's like you collect the picture. You schedule the time when you want it. So it's a pretty impressive program, this, this slew.com. And I like it. But as I said, it's not geared for astrophotography. Now, how did I do my homage? Well, I'll show you that in a few minutes. I'll give you a Reader's Digest version of SLU, how it works. And, you know, like I said, I'll show you how I collected my data. And, and you'll after you'll see how I collected my data, you'll know why it's not really for geared towards astrophotography. I'm Kurt Zepatello, and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Okay. Well, here's my Reader's Digest version of SLU. So when you first open it up, this is the screen you get, and you'll see it's for educators, middle school, high school, college, and K-2 administrators. It's for families. You can actually get like a little family membership too. I think that's like $99 a year, so pretty cheap, uh, but pretty inexpensive. And they have case studies, but let's log on. Okay, so this is what you get when after you log on. So bear with me. They recently re did a whole redo of their site here, so I'm not as familiar with it as I once was. So here's your dashboard, and it gives you a, what's going on. Here's your Canary Observatory, the Chile Observatory, various missions uh, that I went on, the Trifid Nebula, or somebody else is actually doing this, and the Eagle Nebula. Here's my past missions. You'll see if it doesn't if the weather is not so good and you schedule the mission, it'll tell you it didn't collect any data. And here was my quests. Remember I was talking about quests? I've actually done three quests myself. And I'll show you a little bit more of those in, in a bit. And here's the photo. After you go on a, if you're doing a mission, or if you're doing a quest and they do a mission, it'll give you the, it'll spit out the image after it's done collecting it. This is what a typical image would look like. Now, it looks 
it looks pretty cool. I mean, if you just collect it, this is like a, the mission only, only consisted of 50 second luminosity and 20 seconds each of RGB. And this is what I came up with. And because it has an automatic compiler that makes the image and processes it uh, right away. So this isn't too bad considering what it is. As I said, for if you're doing astrophotography, this doesn't look great. But if you're just doing a quick image, this is great. So let's go back to this uh, thing. So this is the dashboard. So we're here. And let's take a look at some of their telescopes. And there's, we'll go on this Chile here. There's Chile 1. Chile 1 is a, and they are calling it an ultra-wide field telescope. Let's see if it tells you about the scope. And we'll go to view our guide and here it is it's a, a celestron edge 14 inch and there's their camera the very good camera and here's what filters it has on it lrgb and it also has an ha filter on it and the mount it's a software bisque which is quite impressive this is the paramount me this is a twenty thousand dollar mount by the way for anybody that's uh, is not in the know. So it's a pretty impressive equipment. So let's take a look at the Chili 2. The Chili 2 is what I have been using when I did my image, as a matter of fact, of the Tarantula Nebula. Now this scope is a CDK, Plane Wave CDK 17 inch. The camera is a Finger Lakes, uh, Finger Lake Instruments, and the chip is a Kodak KAF. It's uh, very, look at that, look at these pixels, nine by nine uh, micrometers, very impressive. The filters are Astrodons, which are top of the line, and that's uh, LRGB. Now this one did not have a HA, so this one only does uh, color images. And again, the mount is a software BISC Paramount. So very, very, very impressive equipment. We, if we go back and look at their other equipment, what they have here, they have another one, uh, the Chile 3, which is a strictly just for lunar and planetary imaging, and that's actually connected up to this uh, first scope over here. Now, in Canary Islands, they have a half meter telescope, they have a wide field telescope and an ultra wide field. They've got one geared towards deep sky imaging, and they also have uh, one that's again, for solar system stuff. And over here, they have a solar scope, one that's dedicated for solar observing. And here's these quests that I'm talking about. So they have numerous quests, and it's not just go click that on the moon. It's it's actually a, the Jovian uh, day. So they're gonna talk about how long Jupiter um, is, or the day on Jupiter and whatnot. Uh, this one, this is uh, on SLU itself, and are we alone? So they have quite, uh, quite neat investigations. Now you can see down here on these investigations, some of them are only supposed to take one day. This one right here takes one season. This one's one day, one day, one day, one week. Uh, charting the cosmos, so this is going to take the whole season. And another one that takes the whole season. This one's uh, this one's for January through March, and this one's October through December. So that one's kind of that's what this is kind of handy. These two things just telling you when you would want to do these. So I have a half year course. So if I was doing it for the first half of the year, cool season, I would probably do this one, which is October through December. For the second half of the year, which is after New Year's, I would do this one right here. You get the idea. They have numerous ones down here. They have like probably about. Um, 50 of these things, or maybe long, maybe more. And they also have a little community here, which this is what somebody takes, took a picture of, and you can post your image uh, that you made. And workspaces, this is for the teacher. If you're a teacher, you can create your own workspace, uh, assign your class to this thing. And so this would be one class. I assigned these various assignments. These are all quests, different quests on here that I assigned for this particular class, okay? And that's for the teacher, that type stuff. So anyways, all in all, this is like a really, really neat system that they have uh, going here, especially for teachers. And again, this is geared towards education, not geared towards uh, astrophotography. Now you might ask, well, why isn't it geared towards astrophotography? I see no indication why. Well, when we go back to the scopes, or actually let's, let's schedule a mission right now real quickly.
and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll go back here to Dashboard. Okay, so we're on Dashboard here, and let's uh, schedule a mission, for example. Let's choose a, a schedule a mission. Now you can schedule a mission by an object, by constellation, by catalog, or by telescope. Let's go over here by telescope. Just for giggles, I'll go to Chile 2, which I've been using for quite a while now. And the next thing you do is you schedule time, and you notice these times on here, there's 23, 25, 23, 30, 23, 30. You'll notice they're only five minute intervals. Now you can only select one mission at a time. So I can only select five minutes on the telescope and have it take my image. So if you understand what I mean, so here's an open slot, reserve this slot, and let me look at uh, image something. Uh, so let me do a refraction nebula or emission nebula. Let's do an emission nebula of some sort. The ones that are highlighted are the ones that are visible at that time. And do the Eagle Nebula M16, preview the mission, and we'll go schedule it. So it's going to take the Eagle Nebula at 155 UTC, universal all time. So I am currently, I think I'm Two hours behind Chile? No, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, two hours behind. I think I'm five hours ahead of Chile right now. So that would be eight o'clock my time or nine o'clock my time. Now, you'll notice I have no idea how many seconds or minute or how many minutes it's going to capture this for. I mean, well, it's going to be within five minutes. And whatever object you're taking, it will automatically have its own algorithm what it's going to do. For the Tarantula Nebula, it was taking luminosity for 50 seconds, and it was taken RGB for 20 seconds each. It may do something similar for the Eagle Nebula, but I'm not sure on that. But whatever it is, I have no control over it. And that's where I, I'm saying it's not really geared towards an astrophotography website because you're at their beck and call, whatever they, they schedule it. Nor should it be. I mean, this is for education purposes. And by doing it this way, by only allowing you one mission at a time, everybody, if you're doing some type of uh, quest that we have, one of these quests over here, if you're doing a quest and you've got to schedule time on a on a scope, you'll you'll have that availability because you'll be able to do it at least within one day in order to do your mission that you got you have to go on. If you were doing this for astrophotography, I'm going to geez, I'm going to be on this thing for like a couple hours. Well, you 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 won't be able to feasibly do these quests because I'd be clogging up for astrophotography purposes. So, anyways, that's why it's not really geared towards astrophotography. Okay, folks. So there you have it. SLU, excellent for educational purposes, but not so hot for astrophotography. So you might want to go to some of those other sites if you want to do remote astrophotography. Well, I hope you found this interesting, and thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.